Hi YouTube, welcome to weeks 24 and 25. <sighs> Go ahead and get started with the quiz. Number one, how far along are you? 26 weeks and one day today. Number two, total weight gain. I figured it out yesterday and I have gained a total of 12 pounds. Um, hopefully I'm in frame. This is the second time I've done this video. I got up to um, get my second battery for my camera because my battery was dying and I noticed when I looked at the video my head from here up was chopped off so hopefully I fixed it enough to where my head is in the video. Number three, how big is baby? Um, from the app that I have on my phone she is about 14 to 14 and a half inches long from head to foot and um, still around the two pound area. Number four, maternity clothes. I haven't bought any new maternity clothes. However, I um, usually I just wear a stretchy tank top and a, you know a pair of like stretchy comfortable pants during the day. Um, you know, it's not like I have anywhere important to go usually, so I'm not going to get all dressed up. But I remember what I was doing. Maybe I wasn't doing anything. I just felt like putting on something a little more fancy. And I was going through the maternity clothes that I had bought at the beginning of this pregnancy. And I picked out one of the um, shirts that I really liked. And it is almost too small. Um, it's really tight in the boob area, which really sucks. And the belly, I still have room in there. I think I'll be able to wear it up until, you know, I deliver. But, yeah, it's it's really, really tight right here. Um, number five, sleep. Sleep has really been about 50-50. When I'm actually sleeping... I, I get good sleep, but um, I've been using a pillow. I put a pillow in between my legs. Um, I've been doing that for probably two weeks now um, because if I don't, then starting the middle of the night until I wake up, my hips will hurt. And I've noticed that um, putting a pillow, I guess it like eases the pressure. It helps a lot. So I'll do that, and there, there are nights that I guess it's just really bad and the pillow doesn't help, but for the most part it does take away the achy feeling. And also, I, I guess <laughs> this baby, this pregnancy is just giving me the weirdest dreams ever because it um, wasn't last night, but the night before last, my husband had to wake me up because I was whimpering in my sleep. And I, yeah, I usually don't whimper or talk or do anything in my sleep. I'm not very verbal when I sleep. So, um, you know, he woke me up and I was having a nightmare or a really bad dream. Um, so I'm glad that he woke me up. But, yeah, it's just, it's weird. I, even if I do have, like, the worst nightmares ever, I usually don't make any sounds. I hope this is recording. Okay, good. <laughs> um, number six, best moment this week. Uh, my husband actually, I think it was last night, he had mentioned that, you know, it's been a while since he felt baby move and we were getting ready for bed. So I said, well, you know, she's moving right now. So I got into bed and I laid on my side and he put his hand on the side that I wasn't on. Um, you know, on my belly, and, you know, she was kicking like crazy, so he got quite a few good kicks in there, which is, you know, it's always fun to feel the baby move, and I think it's a little more exciting for the dads, because, you know, us pregnant women get to feel it 24-7 every time she, or he kicks, and, you know, the husbands, they don't, they only get to feel it every once in a while. <sighs> Number seven, movement. Um, her movement is definitely increasing. It's getting more um, 
more often and harder. You know, she's getting stronger. Um, she did have like a set schedule when like she'd start kicking like eight, nine o'clock in the morning, and then um, I wouldn't feel anything until later that night. When I was getting ready to go to bed, then she'd start kicking again. But now, um, I guess maybe because she's getting bigger or Maybe she just likes to be active, I don't know, but I'm feeling it more often in between. So she still does the morning and the night thing, but now at least like at noon, she's definitely kicking then, and then sometimes even in between. Number eight, food cravings. Uh, I actually don't feel boring this video because usually I don't have food cravings. Um, I have food aversions, but... Uh, I really like Honey Nut Cheerios. I've been craving bowls of cereal uh, for a long time. Um, probably since I did my last vlog. And it, it's not even like the regular Honey Nut Cheerio brand. It's actually just the knockoff. But it is still really good. I love it. Number nine, labor signs. No, no labor signs yet. Um, I have been feeling uh, Braxton Hicks contractions every once in a while, maybe once or twice every four days or so, so nothing nothing terribly bad. Number 10, belly button in or out. Um, it is out, but it's kind of flattened. Instead of it poking out, it's kind of become flat with my stomach. And uh, I'll, I'll get more into why in just a minute. Uh, number 11, what do I miss? I miss being able to breathe properly. Honestly, that's like the only thing I miss right now. Um, she's, she's in the stage, I guess, where she's starting to move more into my ribs. And every once in a while, I'll catch myself breathing really hard because it's getting harder for me to catch my breath. And even sometimes breathing doesn't really, I still feel like I can't catch my breath. Number 12, what do I look forward to? Um, I think sometime next month we are actually going to go in for our next 3D, 4D sonogram. Um, nothing medical. It's, this is just one that we are opting to do ourselves. You know, one we, we have to pay for. And uh, I'll be excited to see what she looks like, you know, what the difference is between the last um, sonogram and this coming up sonogram. Number 13, milestone. Um, just 26 weeks. Uh, I guess I'll hit the big milestone next week. Number 14, stretch marks. Unfortunately, yes, I do have stretch marks. Um, I have new stretch marks on my boobs, which I was really expecting to get them sooner, so I'm not like, I'm not really disappointed or anything, because I knew it was going to happen eventually, and I still don't think I have any new stretch marks on my stomach. I've been like slathering my stomach with cream like crazy, but the stretch marks that I do have are still continuing to stretch out a little bit. So, number 15, skin, hair, nails. Um, pretty much the same. Um, I don't know if it's the prenatal vitamins or the pregnancy itself, but my nails are doing awesome, which is great because then I don't have to go get fake nails. <laughs> uh, hair is about the same, and my skin, not really any change there. Number 16, anything make you sick? No. I think I've... No, I haven't. haven't been nauseous or queasy or anything in a very, very long time. So, no. Number 17, can you see your toes? I don't think so. I haven't tested it out, but I don't think I can. Number 18, happy or moody? Um, once again, I, I'm happy for the most part. However, uh, I'm sure it's just like pregnancy hormones. Um, you know, everything will be just fine, and then all of a sudden I'll get, like, really depressed. And I'm kind of having an argument with myself in my head. Like, 
uh, what is your problem? Why are you acting like this? And then I'll just kind of like sulk for a little while. And, um, you know, I try not to take anything out on the husband or the kids, but sometimes I can't help it. But it's not very often, and it usually, you know, goes away after a while. So, okay. That is all for the quiz, but there are some things that I do want to go over that I wrote down. Um, this vlog's probably going to be pretty long. Um, I do remember last, I think it was last vlog, I said that I was getting really itchy and I was scared that I was getting stretch marks. But I thought it was weird because where I was itchy was the top of my belly, like above my belly button and a little bit on the sides. And I noticed, like, it doesn't feel the same as, you know, when, when you have, when you're getting stretch marks and you're like, try not to scratch, that itchy feeling did not feel the same as the feeling that I was getting before. And, um, you know, I would try not to itch it, but it would itch so bad that sometimes I just couldn't help myself. And I went to scratch it once and I felt like a bump. And when I looked, I had not like a, a covered rash all over, but little blotches of red or little blotches of rash <clears throat> on my stomach. And it just kind of comes and goes, but it stays in the area. So I wasn't itchy from stretch marks. I was itchy from like this phantom rash that decides to come and go as it pleases. My doctor did confirm that I have an umbilical hernia, which is uh, definitely not fun. She did say that um, basically, you know, sometimes hernias you have like intestines or insides poking out. Um, I don't have that. Basically, I just have, how do I explain it? Like, my belly button is right there, and the muscles um, on the, I think it's on the bottom, that's what it feels like. It's just getting weaker. This is my fourth pregnancy, and it's just stretching out more with, you know, with each pregnancy. It gets worse and worse, and um, that muscle is just getting weaker. And as the baby grows, my muscle gets weaker and stretches out in pulls, and, um, you know, before it wasn't hurting often. <coughs> just every once in a while and then about a week ago I sneezed and that was pretty much the end of it I think I ripped it um, I think I ripped my muscle a little more so um, the only way to get any comfort from it basically if you've ever had like a ripped muscle or you know after you work out your muscles feel really sore well that's what it felt like on my belly button area basically like I had done a whole bunch of sit-ups but just focused on that one little part of my muscle and the only way to make it feel better was to push it in I guess basically to release the pressure off my muscle so we went to lovely Walmart and uh, I got an ace wrap um, a six inch ace wrap and um, you know I wrapped that around and um, you know it helped it actually really helped a lot because it took the pressure off of that area. And, uh, you know, I was worried at first that maybe I was going to have to deal with this pain for the whole rest of the pregnancy and then it wouldn't go away. And I was thinking, you know, oh my God, I'm only 25, 26 weeks pregnant. You know, I still have a long ways to go. This is really going to suck. But um, after having this wrap on for a few days, um, I noticed that it's not as sore, so I'm thinking that maybe the muscle kind of mended itself a little bit or healed, I guess, and now it's um, now it, it's pretty much back to the way it was before I, I sneezed, which is good. Um, it does still hurt if I if I move a certain way to tense that muscle up really bad, but for the most part, it's um, it's okay. So. I do have a hernia, but I'm hoping that, you know, um, usually I have my wrap on, and I've been sneezing like crazy, so I have my wrap on and I push in on my belly button when I sneeze so I don't rip my muscle again. So, yeah, um, the doctor did say that, um, you know, she could repair it, but 
if we are going to try for another baby, which I don't know, we might, then um, it would kind of defeat the purpose because the stitches, that muscle is going to be weak. And if your belly stretches out again, it's just going to weaken it again and you're pretty much going to be back to square one. Uh, I have been having very, very intense heartburn. I did get a prescription, uh, I think it's Prevacid, from my doctor, and that helps. Um, that's actually the same medicine that I have had with all three of my pregnancies, and it's always done really well. But, um, I take all my pills at night, and I did that because I was getting really bad heartburn at night, enough to where it would keep me awake or I wouldn't be able to go to sleep or it would wake me up. Um, so it works great through the night, but then I forget to take it like once during the day if I need to and then I'll eat like Mexican food or something and then I'll have heartburn during the day. But I know if I actually were to take the medicine, it would help. Um, let's see. There was one incident. Uh, when was it? Not last week, but the week before last. I think I was almost 25 weeks. I was having really intense cramps and like pressure feeling on my cervix and um, it started out mildish and then it started working up to moderate and then almost like to the point where it was severe, but I don't, I'm not the type of person to just go to the doctor for any little symptom or illness or anything that's wrong with me. I want to actually wait, I know it might sound stupid, but I want to actually wait until I know for sure that something is wrong, which I'm really glad I did because after maybe an hour, um, everything completely went away. So, um... You know, everybody was worried at first, like, oh my god, are you okay? You need to go to the doctor. And I'm like, you know, I, I just want to wait it out for a little while. Not for forever, but just for a little while. Which I did, and it went away. And I think what happened was she was head down. And, because, um, the day before the cramps, I was trying to bend over, and there was like a big blockage right there. Pregnant women, or people that have been pregnant, y'all know what I'm talking about. You can't really bend over because her head is his, her, whichever you've had, their head is right there, and, um, you know, it just makes it harder to bend over because you can't bend right there. That's what it felt like. So I'm, I'm assuming that maybe she was just head down and her head was putting pressure on my cervix and that was causing cramps, or maybe she was on a nerve or something, I don't know, but I don't think she, she didn't stay head down because I started getting kicks down there a few days later, so I think she flipped, but... Anyway, um, for my last thing that I want to talk about, this is probably going to be very, very controversial, and some people are going to completely disagree with me, and that is perfectly fine. I don't expect everybody to agree with um, things that work for me and my family, and this is what works for me and my family. Um... I don't really have a huge family that I can count on um, as far as um, watching my children. And the only person that I really trust to watch my kids is uh, my aunt. Basically, she raised me from a certain age when I was younger. So she's basically like my mother. She's like, she's their grandma. And I don't trust anybody else really um, to watch them for a long period of time. So um, she's really the only person that I have that I can count on to watch them, but she works full time. So if I were to randomly go into labor, I would have nobody to watch my kids. I know some of you are like, oh, just call a babysitter. I'm sorry, there are too many freaking weirdos out there and um, I don't feel comfortable having a stranger watch my kids um, that I don't know. So, um, I talked to my aunt about it and she said that if I, um, you know, to make it easier on her since she has a full-time job, um, 
she would really appreciate if I could have a specific date. Obviously, natural labor, you don't have a specific date. You don't know when you're going to go into labor. You just do. So I talked to my doctor about an induction date. Um, we have an induction date set for August 14th. Um, now, if you do the math right now, I think it figures out to 38 weeks. <clears throat> and some of you guys are like, oh, my God, that's too soon. Okay. The doctor, um, I guess, maybe the way I'm measuring or a combination of my measurements and my previous sonogram, I'm actually measuring a week ahead, so I'll be 39 weeks. Which, um, 39 weeks is pretty close to when you're due anyway. Um, and I went into labor with my last baby at like 37, 37 weeks. So, who knows if I'll even make it that far. But, um, it's kind of a special date for me because August 14th is my dad's birthday. So, to get induced on the day is kind of cool. Um, I know, like I said, there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to agree with this. And uh, there might be negative comments and dislikes and whatever. But, you know, everybody is not going to agree with everybody else and everybody else's decisions, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I trust my doctor 100%, and I would not. Um, if she says that something is okay, then she's a doctor. I'm going to agree with her, and she says that it's fine to induce at that time, so I'm going to trust in her. And I actually got induced with my second daughter, um, and, you know, she came out just fine. No problems. So, we are set to have a baby August 14th, which I think is like 85 days, which is crazy. That's just absolutely crazy. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to talk about, um, even though I... I think she's measuring me a week ahead of time. I'm still going to keep my vlogs the way that they are. Um, you know, next vlog that I do is going to be for 26 and 27 weeks. I'm not going to change anything because that's just going to, um, that'll, that'll just confuse me. <laughs> so it's easier just to keep it the way it is. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. How exciting is it to know that I'm going to have a baby in 85 days? Awesome. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess that's it. Uh, this video is probably entirely too long anyway, and my kids are screaming like usual. So, I'm gonna go, and, um, yeah, I guess I'll see y'all in two weeks. Bye!